Hello viewers, today we're going to be attempting to copy a VHS tape into the computer using a new piece of hardware and software that I just got. I've been trying to do this for several weeks now using a program and piece of hardware for the Apple computer uh, written by Roxio called Easy VHS to DVD. And the version I had, the video part was okay, but the audio was just not in line with the video. And I looked in, into the Google, and a lot of people were saying the same thing. And one particular forum said, well, you have the, the version called Roxio Video Capture, and you need the version called Easy VHS to DVD. So I knew my grandfather had something similar to it, so I called him, and he happened to have the version of the forum mentioned. So he loaned me that copy of the software. And that time the audio was okay, but the video was all screwed up, and it was it was like choppy and jagged, and it wasn't uh, jagged isn't the right way to describe it. Um, it was like dropping frames, and it was awful. I'll put in a, a clip of it right here, just so you can see what it was like. Hi, I'm Ron Peel, and I want to tell you about your new three minute automatic to maker. Now, these are very important things I'm going to talk about right now, and it's important that you pay attention. And this is before the instructional video. They're so important, I want to tell you about it first. About street, not just the ability of being healthy, but also mentally you come to the ballpark every day ready to play. Well, it won't be Tejada probably, but right down the right field line, over the right field wall, which is what, uh, 21 feet. There it is, the Allegheny River. So as you can see, that was pretty much worthless. And that piece of software and hardware is a plug-and-play or as we used to say years ago plug-and-pray because it so rarely actually worked and there's really no settings to modify so you plug it in and just hope for the best and if it doesn't work well it doesn't work not what you can do about it so I got tired of fiddling with that and I asked around to some people that I know and it was recommended to me to get something by the brand uh, Elgato so I bought this. This is a very similar piece of equipment in terms of concept to the Roxio thing that I was using. It has a um, it has I guess what's called a capture card and it takes the RCA composite output of the VHS player and puts it into USB and then there's a program which inherently is not in here uh, that reads this thing into the computer. Now, inherently there's no CD with the software on it, which is kind of irritating because this box was outrageously expensive. I thought for sure there'd be a compact disc made of solid gold in this thing for what I paid for it, but inherently there is not. And apparently I have to go into the website and download the piece of software. So, um, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to log into the computer here. Now let's see how long it takes me to figure this out. I do not necessarily have a good track record at quickly learning how to use software. So, especially when there's no manual, which such seems to be the case here. So this says to... I'll zoom this in here a little bit more. It's out, let's go in, and it's crooked. I'm trying very hard to align this. It's going to have to suffice. So this said, go to www.elgato.com uh, slash downloads, which means it's probably going to be more than one download. So which one is the right one? Um, let's see here. Screen length for else. Nope, I don't want that. Game captures. Nope, this isn't the game. Stream deck for Windows. Oh, for heaven's sakes. This all requires Windows 10. <sighs> Video capture for Windows. Oh, good. It requires Windows 7. Okay. It's downloading very quickly. And I'm going to save this into the desktop here for now. Okay, so let's open this piece of software. 
this tripod is very difficult to use and it's mirror imaged because the way the viewfinder is angled. Alright, hopefully that's good enough. If I try to make it any better, it's probably going to get worse. Okay, video capture 1.15.2. Uh, okay. Next. Signing my life away to Elgato. Okay, it's going to install there. Install. Okay, looks like it's it's completed. Finish. And where did it go? Here it is. Please connect. Okay, so uh, that's that's this. I guess. I'll zoom this thing in so you can see it a little better. And I'm plugging it in now. Okay, it's plugged in now. Oh, great. <sighs> For heaven's sakes. You know, it's always something. See, I knew this wasn't, uh, <laughs> I knew this wasn't going to go too well. I did. I wonder if this has to install while it's plugged in. I'll just install it, inst install it again and hope nothing bad happens. Uh, yeah, repair. That's great. Repair it. Repair. Okay, finish. Uh, okay, well I'm just going to turn the computer off and we'll start all over again. Ugh, it's got six updates. Tag on, this is never going to get done. I'm going to fall asleep before this thing finishes. Well, while that's doing that, I'll show how I'm plugging this up here. Hopefully that goes fairly quickly. So I have a VHS player here. And then I have this cable, and this is kind of important. This cable, because the VHS player only has mono audio output. So this cord takes the mono audio out and converts it to stereo audio. Now it's stereo in the sense that there's two channels, but it's obviously just going to be the same uh, piece of audio through both channels. So this um, this cord is what I needed to get good audio. So um, oh, it's still an update one. I tried the software in the the other laptop, the Dell one, and I couldn't get it to work in that computer either. So for whatever reason, the Windows compatibility or whatever just doesn't work. So I put it into the Apple computer, and by some miracle, it actually works. So, I've got it working now. I didn't want to put it into this computer because this is the only computer that has the video maker in it. And so now I can't, you know, make videos when it's recording. That's why I wanted to record it on the other computer because I can do what I was going to do on the other computer on a different computer and then it records and then it's fine. But now it's going to record. It's going to waste time. It's going to suck up my evening because it's recording and I can't edit the videos. And Anyways... I'm not too happy about this, but this is how it's going to work, so this is how we're going to do it. So, of course it worked last night. I'm hoping it's still going to work today, but who knows. I'm going to open the program. I've got the capture card connected here. And I think I showed the cable yesterday. It's an RCA cable that takes the mono audio output of the player and it puts it into a stereo of course it's obviously the same audio on both channels but at least it gives you stereo output on your playback device 
So, um, my great movie. I thought that was kind of comical. Anyways, um, I'm just going to record a test. So we're going to call it my great testing movie. And uh, I don't know what the purpose of this estimation is, but, you know, let's we'll, we'll say it's, uh, you know, four minutes. 48 meg megabytes of hard disk space. So actually, this is not too bad in terms of how much storage it uses up. So, I'm going to turn on the, the player now. Okay, it wants to select a language, that's fine. Um, okay. So now, I don't know what it's doing. I think it's going to do a channel scan or something. I don't care about that. So, I'm going to put in a tape. This happens to be a instructional video for a pasta maker. And this is one of the tapes I wanted to record. So I'm going to go ahead and put this into the player now. Okay, so here's our preview. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, Click on uh, continue. You can record either four to three or sixteen to nine. I, I don't think there's many tapes that come in sixteen to nine. It just looks weird. That's not what it was originally recorded in. So we'll leave it on four to three. We'll click on continue. The audio is there. Click on continue, and now we're ready to record. So now it's recording. On the bottom, it's indicating how long it's been recording for and how many uh, megabytes it's taking up on the hard disk. And you can hear it's it is stereo audio. Again, it's the same audio uh, through both channels, but at least it's occupying both channels. Okay, so I'm going to stop this now. I'll stop the tape and I want to rewind it anyways. And now we're going to stop recording because I'm done with this. And one of the things I like about this program over the Roxio program is that when I click continue here to save it, well, we have an option to trim here, that's fine. I don't want to trim it right now. When I click continue, it's it's already saved. There's no exporting period. The Roxio software required a lengthy uh, rendering or export. I don't know exactly what it was doing, but it required some kind of a process in order to get it out of the program. So now I'm just left with an MP4 video, which I can take into iMovies and edit it that way if I wanted to. Or I could just trim it in the software, which honestly, a trim on the beginning and end is probably sufficient for editing this kind of an item. So I'll open this up and, and make sure it played okay. Your mixing blades come on this way, and as you can see, there's a groove in the kneading screw shaft. There's an arrow on your mixing blades that helps you line it up. But the arrow on your machine is white, so it's hard to see, but it will help. And this becomes the mixing assembly. So it looks it like it recorded okay. Like the quality seems the decent. These two dots together. As you can see here. Alright, so I'm pretty happy with that. It seems to be working just fine. So um, now I can go ahead and import all these tapes that I wanted to record.